And so we continue in this next page of the piece. Um, some Something I decided to do is add the red fingerings already, just so, you know, you can kind of see my process for how I decide on fingers and position changes. So I already filled out some fingering decisions ahead of time to save time in this video, but it's pretty much the same idea, right? You think about the best way to lay your hands on the keys and, and uh, put those numbers down. So here we have it. Um, the second measure of this line is the return of the introduction, except we are adding these half notes that point up. Okay, and then it continues on to the next line with something new. Therefore, you don't really need to practice this passage like it's an, an entirely new passage. There are just a few uh, things to remember to do with the fifth finger of the right hand. But other than that, it's, it's all the same stuff you played. So if we play the original, fourth finger here, I apologize. So something like that. And um, I'll go ahead and add that fourth finger. So what's the difference? The difference is on each downbeat we actually have to play an extra note in the right hand. So we put the finger down, but we also try to squeeze the other fingers for the notes that are coming up, so in other words, all these notes, into those positions. So one and three, right? They're here rather than like that. So make sure three goes on the E. That way, right? You saw that A, fifth finger, go down to G sharp, fifth finger, like this. again if you get stuck in this way you're in trouble so let's make sure we change our position ahead of time so if I add my position markers it would look something a little bit something like this so first prepare here and then pretty much right away see that little square for the G sharp move the fifth finger same thing here Make sure to move, but then a little square right there. Right, bring the fifth finger over consciously. Right, I was kind of late on that rectangle, wasn't I? So let's make sure to practice this. Th this is where I want to be as I strike the uh, last triplet group of uh, the left hand there. So that's where I want to be. Feel those thumbs almost uh, rubbing against one another. Because then, if that's how you're positioned, no problems. But get into it, so we're holding the B. So what am I doing? Boom, right? Right before that uh, rectangle, holding the B. And... See, that's all I have to do. I've got the B down. I'm still in the previous position with the finger five on G sharp. I'm about to play the left hand G sharp. So yeah, fifth finger on the right hand G sharp, left hand with a thumb on its G sharp, right? So I'm about to strike that left hand G sharp. Boom, that's all I have to work on. And then eventually, Right, that move, little as it is, is extremely important to master. Right, you see, I'm kind of lazy. That was better, right? That was more deliberate. One more time. Right, and as I said before, I'm not going to rehash it, uh, maybe until later in this video, but do the backwards thing. If you're struggling to make sure that you're doing a certain move, implement into, into a string of short practice segments that help you to get there. Okay, so I think you can obviously see the, the last measure of this line is the exact same problem. 
except where you jump in the end of the measure is completely different. The sequence doesn't continue, right? The sequence only continues for these two measures and then something else happens. So first we have this, comes down a note, and the arpeggio comes down, and the same unit of idea, so-called chain in a, uh, or a link in a chain of sequence, uh, of sequenced links, right? And we have the same exact idea in the next measure, arpeggio rises up and then falls back down. And then if we continue a little bit, some like... Right, if you continue the sequence going down, that's what will happen. But of course Debussy does not do that, and we get to this. A new melody, and the fingering for the right hand is this, look. And so on and so on. So it's an interesting two, one bent under. Well, again, I'm, I apologize, I keep showing it to the wrong camera. Right, one is bent under. So you shape these kinds of chords. And then, once we get out, we have to shape a slightly different position. Once we play the one here, two goes over, well, not quite there, maybe right, oh, sorry, struggling. So we want to put two on that B, on that square. And again, readjust, and then G. as soon as we get off of that B, at the end of the measure, or at the end of this line, it goes over here. So all these little micro adjustments are very important to, to be aware of, uh, aware of and to master, but uh, let's see how it all fits together. Yeah, we have this interesting left hand arpeggiation pattern, up and down, up and down. One of the things that I always caution my students uh, about is this tendency. Right, so sometimes people get into this habit of adjusting their so-called um, hand deviation to better position the fifth finger and the thumb to play their respective notes. And it really creates it's something that professional pianists basically never do because it creates too much motion. And while, yeah, you can get away with doing it in a slower piece, the faster you play, the less time you have for all these extraneous motions. So, right, right away, that F double sharp. Look at the actual position of my fifth finger. It's that nine and a half o'clock. It's not, it's not, definitely not 12 o'clock, but it's even not, 11 or 10 and a half it's truly that and the reason for that is that we want to put the thumb as close to the the note it's supposed to play which in this case is this a sharp right here and so to do that we need to deviate our hand such that the thumb is on the same line as the tip of the fifth finger, right? So if it's doing that, you're gonna have to do this. If it's like this, all you have to do is a very slight shift of the forearm. Now, as I get to the A sharp, check out my fifth finger. Right there on the A, on the G sharp. Or at least aiming towards it, even if I, have a smaller hand and I get away from the G sharp, I still want to be on this line. I don't want to be here, right? So I don't want to do that. Right, it's just too much and it's unnecessary. So get used to playing this fifth finger in this kind of way.
that's all I'm doing. Now, I did mention briefly this idea of a kind of a sight reading approach, sloppy approach to learning things on the piano. And what I mean by that is that sometimes you have to get the sense of the bigger picture, bigger ideas. So, yes, the fingertips landing on the right keys and pressing the right keys down is obviously important. But that idea of constant back and forth, back and forth of uh, the forearm is separate from which actual keys the fingers press down. So if I just mime it without playing anything, it would look something like that. Right? That's what you want to feel. And so I sometimes recommend to actually try to play the notes, but only focus on these big, on this big picture. So something like... <laughs> So I'm trying to play some of these notes very gently. I don't, that's not the point. The point is to integrate that awareness of the slight shifts of the forearm into my passage here. So as I said, you, you never really play the piece perfectly until you've learned every part of it and you're actually putting it together to perform it. So it's important to try to with that knowledge, go for some mm, different aspects of practice. So if you're practicing precisely, maybe you're only playing one note, or maybe just a few notes quickly. There you have the concentration and ability to play the right keys. But if you're going for a bigger picture, then, well, you're not obviously able to concentrate as much on every individual aspect, but at least you're getting that part of it right. So working on details, working on big picture, eventually they all come together. And so that's how I think a piece will get learned. Not that you're always only, only doing this sort of um, one approach where uh, you're either doing the big picture stuff and not working on details or you're just working on details and not reminding yourself of how it fits into a larger uh, passage. Uh, I, I mean, you could probably... I found that I probably used to practice the um, this bigger picture approach when I was younger a lot more. And so I was suffering from lack of precision in my playing, right? More, wrong notes here and there and just not, not, not as precise as I wished it could be. Then I shifted to a more just isolate every moment uh, and really practice it with this backwards thing that I've talked about in the previous uh, sessions, uh, tutorials. But um, I always try to balance that approach by returning to these more just sort of sloppy ways of playing larger sections of the piece so I could have a bit of both, right? Okay, so to come back to the left hand, that's probably going to be the hardest leap, right? Between this, and I'll, I'll show you. Between these, uh, not that's not even good, more like that. Between the C sharp there and the E in the bass clef, there is a leap. There's just nothing else you can do. But the leap is important for um, its precision re requirements. You see how I have to put the, th the fifth finger still at this angle so that my thumb is basically touching the edges of the black keys and the third finger has to be on that A. If these two things and plus the thumb don't happen, you will not be able to continue playing through this passage without some kind of a fracture point there. Right, so if I can do that, I'm good. Right, because now I can start playing E, A, then adjust the second finger for uh, G sharp or C sharp, and then first finger on the G sharp. All of this is fine, but it will not happen unless, and I'll use that bracket, these two notes are absolutely secure in your hand. Which means this C sharp here has to be 
uh, staccato sideways C sharp, right? It's not, oh, and now I have to move. That's, you've lost all that time. You need to go like that. Whoops. One more time. Yeah, it's pretty hard. All right, so sometimes I literally just press the C sharp, like I demonstrated in the previous videos, get ready, and then. So it's easy for the third finger to get caught on the uh, side of the A sharp. There it is. Ah, but a little more rotation on the fifth finger. There it is. That's that looks better. Maybe that's nine forty-five, not quite ten o'clock, but not quite nine thirty. <laughs> Something like that. Okay, so. Again, a similar situation over here. I have to prepare, whoops, uh, so I have to jump from this note and I have to prepare these notes. And here is my position marker. There it is. Something like that. So I'm getting close to that A. Boom. That's how I want to jump. the next line I'll get to it in a second but okay putting it all together all right so slight adjustment of the first and second finger in the right in the left hand and now what did I do wrong yes you're correct I was supposed to do this a really strange squeezed right hand position so for you to learn position changes which you don't want to do naturally stop stop where you see them okay yes right here and then continue all right stop make sure you jumped right now continue well, there's that little position i think it's important so let's stop there one more time stopping to check that that square or the little square is being uh, attended to I might just stop and check okay, stop and check what did I do wrong that's right so if you look back here I'll highlight it Am I in the right position? I'm not. That's the right position. A really weird squeeze position. So one more time. That's where I want to be. Coming into it, I'm coming out of this position. Um, Am I in the right position? No, I'm not. I'm supposed to be here. So one more time. And this is an example of something where I think, even for me, this is hard. This is not the usual kind of position preparation. Again, you might choose completely different fingers and you'll have other positions to prepare. But let's say you went with those fingers. I have to now integrate it into my uh, practice process. So if I'm like this, I'm good. Yeah, I can continue. Yeah, my, my right hand is sat, set, but in... Um, Coming out of it uh, like this, I'm holding the G sharp, finger five, right? I've got the, uh, the thumb right here, right? I've got the second finger doing this thing. Okay, so I'm holding the G sharp, I'm holding the A, finger five is aiming to this D sharp right here. Okay, I've got it all prepared, but that's the move I'm trying to work on. Here we go, yeah? So now I've at least integrated it into my segment between that last note of the previous measure and this downbeat note. Okay, let's step back, step back one more. Holding the C sharp, holding the G sharp. Um, about to play that last A and then... Yeah, 
it's a little unconfident. <laughs> okay, make sure I'm in the right position. Yep. And now. Okay, that was better. One more time. Okay, so this is this is starting to work out. Make sure every time you start some practice segment like this, you check you're in the right position at the start. When you stop, same thing, check you're in the right position when you stop. All right, and so eventually you can do the whole thing. So eager to change position, I hit some white keys. All right, so maybe start from right here. that move uh, on that downbeat and continuing in that last measure jump check stop and in a way just the same way that that introductory material you know this one it doesn't actually do that but that sequence where the same idea repeats repeats as it goes down something similar happening here so first, if you look at the beginning of the line, first we're stuck on this, that kind of harmony. And it tries to go up, you know, up a half step in the left hand, you know, but then it falls back down. Now here, we go down a degree from G double sharp, Sorry, what did I just say? F double sharp, which sounds like it, which, which is G natural, right? But we then go down to E. So up, but then down, and then we continue to go down, down, right? So first we're sort of unsure, or the music is trying to sound unsure, where is it going? But then it kind of accumulates that sequence-like direction of again going down down so starting at that red line it actually doesn't do that right but if it continued going down you you will continue going down now again after two measures the sequence stops and we get to here and kind of s start being stuck around we're aiming towards the harmony that launches us, launches us into the dominant chord based on A. So the harmony that launches us into it is actually based on E, the dominant of A. And then that dominant of A leads us into D. So it's this, this kind of what's known as the circle of fifths uh, there. But before we get to it, this new line we have. Right, again, this sort of lack of certainty. We get here. Try to get back up, and there's a ritenuto or ritardando. I never really know what the composers imply with these writs because they can be ab uh, different abbreviations, right? But basically, slow it down a little bit and then make sure this position is correct. So, right around here. pretty difficult uh, adjustment right a pretty snappy kind of position change so right, let's put it right here again you can see I'm not waiting for the end of the, those long notes because it's pedal so the long notes will sound long but you definitely want to move off of them as soon as you can one more time move this thing sooner. Oops, sorry, pressed the wrong button. 
nothing. There it is. That, that's what you'd want to do. Why, the, why is it piano? It was piano before, but I guess maybe Debussy was worried that people would get overexcited and start playing this passage a little too loud and so basically saying make sure that at this special written retardando let's say moment it's really quiet and then here again we have that same problem a tempo uh, seemingly we get back to the previous energy before the retardando and then another retardando with another piano so to me that indicates a little more energy maybe a little louder right something like that yeah a couple of different fingering choices there i'm actually going with the editors here so uh let's see position on that uh, rectangle that you see. Now here, by the way, in the left hand, let's also talk about the little adjustment. It's an interesting problem. If I maintain this kind of angle in my fifth finger, look what where it puts my third finger. And I think most people's. Because, yeah, you know, I can try to put it on, on F sharp, but that's way too much tension. So one ability is to just do that and then jump. So we're, we're sorry, I think, yes, I, I lost my bearings there for a second. Um, so right here, that's one possibility. You just kind of do this and only prepare the fifth finger the, the, the third finger is on D-sharp, basically, and so you end up doing that, right? You're just jumping. Perfectly reasonable. A little jumpy, a little staccato-y, uh, not as smooth as, you know, all these previous harmonies, but po certainly possible, and there are always exceptions to any rule. The other way to negotiate this problem is to see if your hand allows you to do the following. Right, so what I did here is slightly, um, yeah, I'm not even sure, you can probably see it on the side cameras and the top camera, instead of keeping my hand flat, right, I'm trying to squeeze my fingers uh, apart from each other kind of allowing a bit of the forearm rotation to play this F sharp with finger three a little sideways. But that brings the fifth finger on top of the B natural without me leaving the comfort of the third finger being on F sharp. So that's, that's another way to do it. Right? I'm holding onto the F sharp and allowing this and the roof-like shape, sloping roof, so I slope towards the fifth finger to, to take place. And that's, that's yet another way to position your fingers, in which case I would be able to do this. Show it this way. And then I would have to remind me that it's this kind of slopey shape. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. I don't have a symbol for it yet. But it's something that I'm always aware of, that while I try to keep my hand basically flat as I navigate or palm, well, anyway, so I'm, I'm not trying to do that or that, right? Most of the time it's flat on the keys, but sometimes that can help. Okay, so let's try that. kind of find these solutions intuitively sometimes. I think the far more important thing to be aware of 
fifth finger always playing at this kind of an angle, first finger always next to the uh, black keys. <laughs> potentially pull out of the inside of the keyboard and, and play here but for some reason I find that I'm actually more relaxed if I don't do this kind of stretch I mean you can tell how far apart I'm having to spread my left hand fingers whereas here you can see they kind of relax a little bit and I just use my forearm to slightly shift my position to uh, be able to hit the right notes. I'm also feeling that part of my palm just touch and smoothly gliding on those white key surfaces. And it just gives me that sense of security. Where's that if I'm here? On the one hand it's easier because I'm playing on the edges of the white and black keys. On the other hand I have a lot less being communicated to my hand through the tactile sensations of the keyboard. I'm feeling those black keys. They're telling me where I am. I don't even need to look down. I'm using that table of sorts of the white key surfaces to kind of really almost provide support to my hand so my shoulder doesn't get so tired. Like all these little things that I find playing in the key, inside the keys really works as soon as you transition to, you know, having to work with that kind of material. Big arpeggios, you know, thumbs continuously having to play black keys. And yeah, I mean, I know about the physical lever rule where it's easier to press the key on this side. But I think our fingers are generally strong enough to play them here or even here, right? So I, I would definitely encourage everyone to be aware of this inside the key, uh, performing, being able to solve a lot of technical problems. Okay. dome you can see it actually pushes my fifth finger slightly inside even further inside the keys I, I could let I could let that happen Oops. okay what's the, what's wrong with this picture right here I'm in the last measure and clearly not doing something well, as you guessed, so the positioning for this part, if we start with finger two, we could even put the fifth finger on the E like this, but the third finger will have to wait until this point. But I think that just feeling of most of the fingers are in place. I think that's a good feeling. All right. And I would encourage you to instantly reposition the first finger like this. So a couple of little position adjustments. Could jump to a three like this and move down to that oh I'm sorry I'm actually <laughs> not showing it L let's go ahead and push it like this right. if I just put my first finger on G sharp and go over with finger three I think I'm good like this and just move the whole thing down here in fact 
you know what? Let's make it even simpler. Take advantage of the fact that we have the pedal here. And just move. That way I don't have to think, okay, three and now one. It's just, here is G sharp, finger one. And here is the new position, F sharp, D. So that's what I would do. But you'll notice because both thumbs have to play the same key, I kind of have to have my thumb in the right hand slightly above. Right? And now here, of course, the super difficult position jump. So for that reason, I have it marked slightly wrong. There it is. Right, I just want to jump right, right away. Another super big position jump. So what that means is, of course, that no what that note is. A, st uh, a staccato note and that note there at the end of the measure is a staccato note so just practice right, it's very very snappy move in the left hand both of those times another thing that has to happen if you don't do it you're in trouble is the repositioning of your torso midline right so here I could probably still be let's see yeah middle of the piano but by this point see what I'm doing shift and shift and shift By the way, maybe it's possible to move both hands at the same time. Because if you move just the right hand, again, same problem. You have to kind of hold it above the left hand while it finishes its triplet. And just kind of park it in this general vicinity. And so as soon as the left hand does this, then you can come down. So that's one way. Another way is we literally grab this and move it to right here. Um, and that will tell us to just move both hands at the same time. Like that. By the way, you see our tempo? It means writ, writ actually has to continue. So let me put a reminder here. That we don't actually want to be fast. And that gives us plenty of time for both of the hands to jump down like this. So a couple of things, torso shifts down, right, and then you're slowing down and then you're finding yourself all the way at the bottom of the keyboard. useful thing to be aware of that we're changing the finger two such that we're in position for the whole thing I'm not actually sure what that red circle is doing here uh, okay one more time right so easy two measures finally encourage you to in fact do this change position right away and just practice it I, 
I would do this, look. We play this with a 2, but then let's play this with a 4. And we'll play this with a 1. I'm, I don't believe that there is anything inherently wrong with playing a black key with a thumb. It just depends on the context of what you're doing. Oh, sorry, I forgot to move my view. I'm so apologize. Uh, hold on. Because I'm looking at my iPad here and not always checking what the video is showing. Okay, um, one more time. First measure of this line. a little bad. I want to hold that F sharp and the melody into this new harmony. Right? There it is. You can still barely hear it. So bring it out and then keep everything else soft. So poco mosso means a little more movement, so building up. Nice thing is triplets stop, so we don't have to worry about super fast notes, but we still have to keep that momentum going. And what will get in the way of this momentum is, of course, some Weasley fingering in the right hand on the one hand, but those huge leaps in the left hand. There and there. So if you want to master this uh, last two measures of this page, you really have to work pretty hard. So that, that's a very, very fast move. That too, you might argue, is pretty fast, but you have a whole rest, a uh, whole half of a measure to get this right. But this, you just have, you know, a split second to go from here to here. So, yeah, definitely practice those staccato notes here and here. Practice the position adjustment in the right hand. And you'll be fine and we'll just go on to the next measure in another video. This is already long enough and I think we covered quite a lot of ground in one tutorial. So again, uh, any questions or comments, please leave them down below.